Howdy everybody, it is great to see you again. Today, we are gonna go over an entire edit from raw image all the way through all of the steps, including masking and everything. Now, this video actually comes out of my Lightroom Master of Editing course, which I just released last week. And I was trying to think like, okay, what would make me buy a course? And essentially what would make other people wanna buy my course? Because let's be real, there are so many experts, so many Lightroom courses out there that it's very hard to choose. Well, that's why I just decided to give away one of my full edit videos from the course. Now in my course, I, I literally go over everything. I go over the basic panels, I go over importing and exporting, I go over tips and tricks, I update as Adobe updates Lightroom, I update the videos. I mean, this is a very, very extensive course that I've been working on for a year or so now. So it's really, it's, it's amazing, but you have to see that for yourself. I mean, obviously you're not gonna spend your hard earned money on it. So for this video, we're just gonna show you that lesson. Um, so without further ado, take it away, other Will, take it away. In this video, we're going to do a complete start to finish edit of our waterfall photo. And again, you have this raw photo, so feel free to follow along, and when you're done with the edit, save it as a preset to use later. So let's get into Lightroom. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do with this photo is get rid of some of these logs. So we're going to zoom in here, and we're going to go to the patch tool, and we're gonna use the content aware. Make the brush a little bigger, and we're just going to paint over and see if we'll get lucky to do the whole thing in one go. And, no, does not look good. So let's, without clicking another tool, click on the stamp tool. This will turn that adjustment into a stamp tool. As long as you have it selected, if you select a different one, it will adjust as needed. Uh, so we're gonna bring this up here. Gonna bring it up here and see if we can maybe make this work. No, I don't think so. Okay, so we'll delete that. Click the content aware and let's do this separately. So let's do this here first. Okay, that's workable. Let's try this here now. Uh, refresh. Okay, that works. And then we're going to drag here and take out this piece. All right, let's turn that one into a clone stamp. Drag it up here. Good. All right, and then we're gonna click on this one and switch this one to a clone stamp as well. For some reason, sometimes the clone stamp is, is drunk, I swear. like. Doesn't make any sense what it's selecting. So drag this up here. There we go. Good, perfect. That looks much better. Now let's go ahead and do this one here. So we're just gonna try this again. Use the clones, like that doesn't even make sense. Why would that be part of it? Good, that looks fine. And then let's switch to a new one and use the content aware on that one. Nope, that didn't work. So do the clone stamp. Again, it's not water. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, that looks good, but now these trees look a little bad, so I'm gonna clone stamp those out. Move this down. There we go. To navigate around, just so you know, when I push and hold space bar, when I'm in the mask tool, I get a little hand, you'll notice, and then I can move around the image. So that's what I'm doing to move around the image really, really fast. Sorry, I don't know if I explained that. Okay, good. So that looks great click out of the, the adjustments, and now we have taken out those sticks. So here's the before, here's the after. Looking much better. Actually, I'm gonna try and take this one out as well using the content aware brush. I think we'll get lucky with this one. Yeah, nice. Okay, good. So now we've removed those sticks that I did not like. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is crop the image. So this is technically our horizon, so to speak. We're gonna crop it so it is straight. Looks pretty good, perfect. Now we are actually ready to edit the image. So first let's go into the basic panel and we're gonna make a few adjustments. First, set the white balance. So we're gonna press W on our keyboard to get the eyedropper tool. We're gonna select a neutral color or white and we're, it's easily just gonna warm it up really nice. So that looks great to me. Now the edit that we're going to do on this image looks really, really nice on landscape photos that have rich colors. So this one has really nice greens, really nice browns, 
and it just, it'll look really, really good. It'll pop off quite a bit with this edit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. We're going to adjust first the highlights. So we're gonna lower the highlights, get some detail back in that waterfall. We're gonna raise the shadows, bring back some detail on all those darks. You don't have to go all the way. You don't have to go to 100. You could just go to whatever looks good in your, in your eye. And then let's set the white and black point. So remember, push and hold alter option. Click the slider, slide up until you see white in the waterfall. Not necessarily the sky, because that over there is blown out and doesn't apply to the, the whites, because we want the whites of the actual subject, which in this case is the waterfall. Then we're gonna do the blacks, and we're gonna push and hold alter option and slide until we see blacks. So we're gonna go to about there. And already this image is so much better. Here's the before, here's the after. I, I mean, this is looking great and we've made five tweaks so far, maybe less. Okay, next thing is, so how are you liking the video so far? Not too bad, pretty easy to follow along, uh, easy techniques, going over everything pretty descriptively. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do with this video. But since we are on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and if you have any questions, don't forget to comment. Also, I am going to link the course in the description. That way, if you do decide you wanna get the course, it'll be linked in the description. But for now, let's get back into the edit. On all of my landscape photos, I personally like to lower the clarity on the overall image. And then if I need to bring back some attention to certain spots like these rocks here and the waterfall, I'll bring it back with a mask. So overall, I'm gonna lower the clarity to about 20. Not much, just enough to kind of soften the whole thing down a little. Then we're gonna to go to vibrance. And a trick with landscape photos is lowering the saturation to about 20, 25, and then raising the vibrance to about 10, 15, 20, whatever looks good. This kind of evens out the colors a little in my opinion and gives you kind of a starting point with the colors. Now that we've done that, let's go into the tone curve. And with this one, I want true black in there. So sometimes that faded look looks great when you raise the, the tone curve like this. But for this one, we're gonna put a point in the black, the shadows and a point in the midtones, And we're just gonna drag these down a little. That's all we're gonna do. Basically just putting a little bit more black in the image to create some more contrast. Very, very simple. Now let's go into the color mixer where we're going to affect the hue, saturations, and luminances. The first thing is the hue. Now with this image, we want it to be very folly. So it looks good as is. We're just gonna make a couple of tweaks real quick. First, we're gonna affect the yellows and the greens. We're gonna make the yellows a little bit on the greener side, so plus 11, and the greens more to the greener side as well. We're gonna do plus 30, I think. Good, see how that makes that pop quite a bit, gives that nice contrast. If you remember in our color harmony video, greens and oranges look really nice together. They're in the same palette area. So that's what we're working on now. Now we're gonna go into the saturation. Now with saturation, we're gonna lower the, the yellows because we wanna pull out some of that yellow color to let's say 50, minus 50. We're going to raise the greens to really make them pop, not too much, maybe plus 15. And that's all we're gonna do there. Now let's go to the luminance. And with the luminance, we're going to darken those yellows, minus 10, darken the greens to minus 25. And there's not blue in this image, but I do know that blue is in some of the images that we use this edit on. So we're actually gonna darken that to minus 25, and we're just gonna put minus five in the purple. Now it doesn't seem like that was a big edit because there's not really purple in this, but <laughs> on other edits, it does apply. So that gives us our hue, saturation, and luminance. Now here's the before, where we started, and here's the after. It's looking pretty good, isn't it? The final thing for this image in the main overall edits is our calibration, and we're gonna lower the blue primary to minus 30. Now this is really going to make that orange and teal look. When you adjust the blue primary to the left, you're really putting in a lot of orange and teal in the image. Like if we went all the way, it really changed the image, and honestly, that looks fantastic, which you could go with. But for this image, we're going to just do a minus 30. Now we've done pretty much everything we're gonna do in this panel. So now let's do the masks. Bring attention to the waterfall. First one we're going to do is a subject. I wanna see if it's gonna, perfect, it got the waterfall. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna brighten it up a little. 
Then we're going to take a, rate, a linear, press M on the keyboard, and we're going to pull attention there. Now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to subtract a brush and we're going to take out the, color, the darkness on these rocks because this is a great foreground to work with and you want a little bit of attention to go there and then pull you into the image towards the waterfall. So then we're going to do another linear filter, pull it from the top, darken that down, and then what we're going to do is, I hope you saved your dodge and burn adjustments, we're going to go to our presets, which you should have saved this one, and we're going to mask presets and we're going to add dodge and burn. Now that looks a little aggressive, so we're going to open them up, go to the dodge, lower that down a little bit, and let's see, are we going to make any tweaks to it? Uh, looks pretty good, let's adjust the feather, yeah, let's lower that down a little bit, and then let's go to the burn. All right, let's darken the burn down to about 0 .6, 0 0.55. Good, so here's without the masks, and here's with the masks. Way more intense. And then we can do a little bit more. This is more dodging and burning, but a little bit more specific. So press K on the keyboard. This will give you a new brush. You can also go to Create Mask and go to Brush. Then we're going to um, paint here on the rocks. Press O on the keyboard to turn on Show Overlay. We're just going to paint here on the rocks a little bit, okay, just like that. And then we're going to paint here on the waterfall. Now, remember I talked about earlier that I like to adjust the clarity of certain parts of the image? Well, that is what we're doing. Good. Now, let's adjust the clarity. Scroll down, raise the dehaze a little bit. Good. And then raise the clarity a little bit. This will give us a little bit more before, after. It just gives us a little bit more detail in these these images, which is what makes them a little bit sharper. When people always ask, why are your photos so sharp? There's your, there's your secret. <laughs> just a little bit more detail in there. And then we're going to actually raise the texture as well. Again, detail. See, if you add it way too much, it looks bad. But if you just add a little bit, like 20, there you go. There's a nice little texture in that image. And there we have it. Here's our before. Here's our after. And that is an awesome edit. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next lesson. And that's it. That is my full edit from raw photo, importing raw photo all the way to a finished product. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, YouTube recommends this video. I personally recommend this video. If you want to subscribe, you can hit this here. But don't forget, if you want to sign up for the Lightroom Master of Editing course and become a master, I'll link that in the description. I'll see you in the next video.